Hey everybody, welcome to another round of Can't You Plays, and today we got a Kickstarter preview of Roleplay Adventure Gold Packs and Secret Expansion. If you don't know, I played through the entirety of Roleplay Adventures, um, that is on a playlist that's in the channel. I believe I linked it in the description, so it should be down there. But uh, what was really awesome is that um, <laughs> Thunderworks Games, uh, I reached out to them and they were awesome enough. Uh, Kurt, thank you to, to, you know, talk to this small YouTuber who doesn't have the big numbers and say, hey, we, we, we saw your content, we like what you got, and um, we sent you Gold Packs, Gold Packs of Secret preview so you can check it out. And I was like, so, hey, Kay, hey, Elaine, what's going on? Welcome, 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 chair, pull up a chair. Hey, Dragon, what's going on? So, uh, they, they sent me, this is a Kickstarter preview. They sent me Adventure Books uh, 1 and 2, which we're going to play both, but not tonight. We're going to play Adventure 1 book tonight and go through that book to see how that how it plays, how it's changed, what's new. There are some additions to the game, uh, especially the character, um, the, the party sheet. There's There's been some adjustments, so it's going to be good. Hey, Dragon. Hey, Greg. Hey, Janet. What's going on? What's going on? Looking forward to see how this goes. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm going to do pretty well. Uh, before I begin, I want to thank my Patreons. Thank you, my YouTube subscribers. And if you're neither just coming to hang out, check us out, see what we're about. Thank you and welcome as well. Um, I did turn on subscriber only mode chat only because more bots are on Prowl. Um, so I'm trying that, to have that not interrupt our fun. So that's the reason why. Um, if you want to pop into the chat, say hi, sub in, chat, sub out. Completely fine with me. It doesn't, it, it's not an obligation. I just want to make sure it doesn't mess with our viewing enjoyment. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the Kickstarter page um, because they have, I think this is it. Like tomorrow it's over. <laughs> the, the Kickstarter ends. So I'm coming in on the tail end. Um, but at least we get to play this game and check it out. Check out and see what y'all think. And if it's something you want to last minute back or if you're still making that decision to determine what you want to, what you want to see. Don't want to divert, but I am torn. Should I back? Or just buy regular role player? Both. <laughs> the answer is both. The reason why the answer is both is because if you buy regular role player, when you when you finish your game of regular role player, you can take your character and implement it into role player adventure. There is a whole page in the rule book about how to do that. If you want to, my progression method of that is play role player. If you're like, this is cool, but it's missing something. Buy Monsters and Minions, find out how awesome that game is, and then from there you just progress onto um, into role player adventures with that same character that you made after beating the monsters. From monsters. Yep, yep, Kate, I agree completely. If you get role player, get Monsters and Minions. But for people who are like, well, I don't, I want to try it out to see if, whether I like it or not. Just get regular role player, try it out, and if you're like, this is cool. When you get Monsters of Minions, like Kate said, it takes the game to a whole nother level. And then this is the this is the next step of that, which is role player adventures that you'll go through it. Yeah, if you're trying to be budget conscious, just get regular role player. I would say get role player, try it out if you like it. Role player adventures is available on the Thunderworks site if you pick it up. This is Kickstarter that has, you know, the AS exclusives. So don't, you know, if, if FOMO bug has you like it has me, <laughs> I backed it. But since I went through the entire game. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, and I'm so happy that they're doing more with it because that entire playthrough was amazing. Like, I had fun the entire time, and I think Cynthia, Kate, and I played it, and we all got three different endings, which I thought was so cool. So, all right. Anyway, we're going to get into the gameplay. We're going to have some fun, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about the Kickstarter and show you what's out there. Let's take a look at the... Uh, I'm going to take you down to the table, and then we'll look at the Kickstarter, and then we'll get right back. Okay, for people who are wondering about costs and what to do with money. So it fits, it fits on the big table. Before, I remember, I was playing Jigsaw and everything, but now we got space and opportunity and we got zooming. Great. So this will be great. Um, these are two new characters that come with, uh, that come with the game, that come with the expansion. Uh, so I picked those two because representation is all what I'm about. Um, so let's take a look at Kickstarter, and we will check this out. Uh, here, okay. So 
So Kickstarter has about 19 hours left. They've already funded. They they funded it within two hours, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, but they already funded. Uh, this includes, I believe, and I got my sheet here to to read with it too, because I got a sheet to say what what to say on it. Not what to say, but what's coming with it. So the expansion includes uh, seven adventure can seven adventures that are coming in these seven new books that are coming, which means seven new maps that are coming. Um, 51 new enemies, 82 title uh, title cards, 81 rare cards, 61 discovery cards, and 82 generated characters. Uh, one to four player. Here's my thing. I don't recommend this game with just one character. You can play it solo, but you got to play it two-handed. If you rewatch, you'll see I had a hard time ramping up at true solo. But I suck at dice rolling. You might not have that issue. However, I did have that issue, but as soon as I switched handed, the game was fantastic. It was fine and fun. So, true solo, eh. Two-handed solo, yes. <laughs> All the yes. Um, so, it continues on the story. It says, um, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, yeah, I did the pre-gens, I did all that other good stuff. It does, uh, there's upgrading and all that. that comes into it. Diamonds. So, these are the new books that are in here. So, it says seven, but there are eight. <laughs> oh, because one of them is a repl- is the epilogue, that's why. So, there are seven of them. We're going to be playing through Festival of Heroes. I have Servants of Zima uh, that will play as well. But then these other books are in here for it to go through. And then the epilogue is the scrying pool. So, there are eight stories, but seven adventure books, if that makes sense. Um, so... Let's see, there's a, the, oh, yep, there's a new profession system that's, that's included in the game that kind of builds upon it. I'll read about that to tell you about it. Party sheet has changed. The ability to rest has changed. Yeah, that was hilarious. The ability to rest has changed. That, that is a brand new thing that's on there. So if you just get this expansion, it's 55 US plus shipping, right? We, we're not going to say that's all it is, plus shipping. Um, however, like, I read off what, what you get um, with what comes with that, blah, 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 blah. Um, wonderful people who do reviews that are probably way better at, uh, than me at doing things. You can check out their videos if you want to know what's going on with them. All of them you all know. Uh, there's a graphic novel that they're creating if you're interested in learning more about Talos, the, the world Talos that all of this is built on. And... Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. So the Golpex expansion, uh, Golpex is secret expansion, is 55 bucks. If you decide to get the novel with it, it's 80 bucks. However, if you want to get role player adventures by itself, that's 130, right? Because that's a big box. It is a heavy, big box, <laughs> um, which I think 130 is a good price for it. 185 if you want that and uh, gold packs. Now, here's the question that someone asked before on Nefra's Judgment expansion. Nefra's Judgment is not more adventure. Nefra's Judgment is kind of like, it's a backstory for your character that they're trying to solve, that, that, that you're working through your character's personal backstory. And once you complete that backstory, you get like cards, you get abilities, you get all this other stuff. But that's all it is. It's an addendum to role player adventure get me so if you're saying hey i want to uh, is nefra's judgment expansion something that i need to play role player adventures no you can play role player adventures without it and be absolutely fine um with gold packs a secret you do need role player adventures to play it it just comes with the content it doesn't come with everything that role player adventure that that is in base role player adventure like dice like the 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 um tokens cubes all that other stuff the cards the armor all those things you don't get in the expansion you have to have role player adventure to play it okay uh, i saw role player adventures but by itself on amazon for 180 so with the expansion it's not a bad deal yeah 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 it's not a bad deal at all um, and then this is just getting everything that's there. There's a, like, there's, you can buy add-on. Oh, that's just net first judgment. Yeah. So, this is just, if you're wondering what you want to spend on it, 
if you're like, well, I already have role player adventures. Do I need Nefrim? Don't need it to. All that is is just extra. It's the extra stuff that you'll get extra cards, extra abilities, alignments, things like that that you deal with that you don't need to play role player adventures for it to be fun. If you're saying, well, what if I just pick up Gold Packs of Secret by itself and I don't own role player adventures, then you're in a bad one because you need the base game to play the expansion. It's not a standalone expansion. If that makes sense. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to the table. Oops, I don't ask me questions. Okay, cool. So, we've got all this stuff set up. Thank you, Kirk, for sending me this. Um, all right, so we've got this is, this is the uh, Kickstarter preview rule book. I show y'all everything. Anyway. It says, uh, 2,000 years before Azima's return through the gate of Brazier Wall, which saw that final battle there, the world of Ulos is at peace. Dwarves and bugbears, elves and goblins, dragons and all live side by side with little conflict thanks to the tireless efforts of the Heroes Guild. That's me. Don't <laughs> hey, Cobalt Gamer, what's going on? Under the guidance of the Immortal Knight. That's me. Members of the Heroes Guild travel the land, lending their aid and settling feuds. But a new era dawn. In order to unify Ulus under a single banner, Queen Gilnak establishes the nation of Nalo. I said Talos, it wasn't Nalo. Several clans and city states pledge their allegiance to the new queen, sending their representatives to Gilnak's royal council. Many others band together, forming the Dragul Resist Alliance to resist the steadily growing kingdom of the Gilnish Queen. Meanwhile, Ulos' greatest inventor, Gullpax the Crafter, builds a mysterious device of tremendous power deep in the frozen expanse. If you play in my cartographer's game, you know where you see and play in that in that zone. The peace enjoyed across Ulos, enforced by the Heroes Guild, threatens to come undone. In the midst of this rising conflict, you and your fellow hopefuls join the contest of champions, which will settle the next recruits into the Heroes Guild. With war on the horizon, it's a dangerous time to be a hero. You'll make allies and enemies unravel the crafter's mystery and decide the fate of Ulos. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Oh, that's all good. It's all good. As long as you're here to come just hang out, let's play some games and just have some fun. So, um, it's a new adventure. You have to start over a new character. If you play role player adventures and <laughs> Viva La Resistance, no, for King and Country! So, um... But, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. The, you, if you can't take, if you play role player adventures and beat it, you can't take that, that character story ends there. To play uh, Gold Packs of Secret, this is a new era, so you have to create a brand new character and build them. Okay? Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Then we get into what the new updates are. We have profession. When we get into Adventure 1, it's going to have me choose a profession. Each character gets their own profession. That's a new thing, and I'll explain what professions are when I choose them. And then there's another little cool thing that was added, uh, that was changed, which was resting. If you look over here, actually, there's... If you look over here, Remember before on the old charts that there was a, a slot for you to put rest token on that you would just flip the rest token? That's gone now. There is no more rest token. What happens is whenever you choose to rest at a time where you can rest, you mark off an X. And then if you rest again, you mark off another X. And when you get to this last fourth X, if you rest again, you have to actually lose a card forever. <laughs> to it doesn't say discard a card. It says put it back in. Uh, let's see. It says the um, one player must choose a card from their hand, discard space or spend space, and return it to the corresponding deck to then perform the rest as normal. So if you need to rest more than four times, you are actually losing card. You get to choose which card you lose, so it's a good deck mill but you are actually losing cards from that point forward. Um, when the book will tell you when you can erase these. and So it makes the rest system, instead of me being like, okay, I'm going to fight two people and rest, fight two people and rest, 
now you really have to be strategic with how you're going to do prep. There's also this new area up here with card limit. This is if you're playing legendary mode. What this means is that you, if you play legendary mode of this game, you can only have this amount of cards in your deck. You have to, so this is basically saying that's your, that's your deck limit. And that's it. So I just put it in here. I'm not playing legendary mode, but I put it in here because I wanted you to see what that change was. Can these new rules for resting be used in the core game? Yes, John, it can. You can retroactively add these to the core game. Yes, you can. Uh, no longer resting after every battle then. It, exactly, exactly. So these are, the, these are the changes that came. Everything else you'll notice on here are the same, except for the faction. There's Queen Gimmax's faction, which last time I played, I went for King, King and Country. This time, I will be going with Goldpack's favor. I'm going to be going with the, which was the Starlight Door, the Starlit Door last time. And then someone else did the Draw Goal Alliance, which I think that was Kate. That's why she said Viva La Resistance. So um, I'll be going with Gold Packs this time because I don't go with the Draw Goal Alliance. They treated me cruel when I was in prison. I didn't like it. <laughs> they tried to beat me up. All right. Okay, so those are the changes that happen. Other than that, everything else is, kind of, is the same, right? All right. So we've got our characters set up. Cool book already out, ready to go. <laughs> so let's take a look. So this is, I named her Flavia, but this is, it says unknown on it because it's green and bad. So I can't, can't really dive into it, but it says unknown. And when you flip it over, she gets a class of elf, sorry, a race of elf and a class of hunter, which is green. And then she gets her build out. And then if you're playing Nefra's, uh, Nefra's Judgment, that, that's what this goes with. But since we're not going to be playing that in there, this, we, we build her deck with that. So those are her stats to start. And on the Hunter keyword, oh, there we go. It says, Season, choose a die in the dice pool, then discard any number of skill cards from each card, or each card discarded, increase that die by one. So that's a one-time burn until you rest um, for what comes there. Our next person here is another unknown. When you flip it over, he gets the Human Beastmaster, which is purple. And those are his starting uh, equipment and stats. And as you can see, he is a savant if you're using uh, uh, Nefra's Judgment. And he gets the Beastmaster card rolling. Reroll any number of purple dice or familiar dice in the dice pool. So well, that's his class ability that he could burn one. So as you can see, their stats have already been filled out for us to play, and they're ready to they're ready to rock. All righty. So there is the book, Festival of Heroes, Adventure Book One. It is. This is not how it's going to look when you get it. Yours will be a lot nicer. This is a preview copy. Before I jump in, I just want to let you know that a lot of the subjects change. I too, once this delivers, once my Kickstarter delivers, I'm going to replay this segment because a lot may have changed from uh, this preview when we got it. But we're going into Festival of Heroes. So let's see what happens. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, so map. <laughs> map uh, adventure map. Place the Festival of Heroes adventure map. That one right there. Uh, in the center of the table next to the party journal. Uh, exploration XP. Place one XP on each flooded location A, B, and C. So we got the festival grounds of B, we got the garden of A, and we've got the house of our alarchists as C. Cool. Party journal. Uh, place bonus play tokens on the party journal equal to the recorded value, which ours is one. I put one there already. Find the favor markers and place them at the zero starting, which I did saw that. Uh, char character sheets. Place each character sheet in hand, ready to go. Fill their attribute rows. Encounter tokens. Place encounter token one and two on the table to create a pool. Flip them face down, shuffle them, and put them back in. So there is two. There is one. Flip them over. Shake them up. Not gonna lie. We'll go here. 
this one will go. Alright, so the adventure has been made. Um, for each available encounter space on the adventure map with the face down token tool, one character in the party. If there is only one character in the party, reveal one random. So this isn't playing through solo. You you deal with that, but we're not. Um, special rules: the event token. Find an event token, place and add it to the supply. An event token is Mary. There are you. numbers. These. These are events. That says special rules. Find an event token and add it to the supply. During the adventure, you may make choices that will require you to place event tokens on adventure map locations. If you explore a location that has an event token on it, Follow the uh, the action indicator that says if there's an event token on this location. All right, cool. Made our pile of that. Okay. Furl log. Watchmen unfurl banners from the rooftop. I don't know if that's too washed out or white or you can't see it, but I'm going to read. So if you can read along, great. Watchmen unfurl banners from the rooftops bearing Azima's sigil, and trumpeters sound from every tower encircling the city. The day of the festival had finally arrived. The crowd fills the narrow streets of Wildwood, laughing at the top of their lungs in a dozen languages. The air is thick with sweet-smelling pastries and roasted meat. In Wildwood, elves, goblins, gnolls, and humans uh, commemorate this holiday side by side. No one is excluded from the celebration. The procession is led by Embry, the immortal knight, champion of Ulos. That's not what I named it. Sitting astride her white horse, townsfolk shower her with a, seem with a seemingly endless supply of red and gold confetti from their balconies as she leads the parade into the town square. The immortal knight will administer the rest of the, will administer the test of champion. Any who uh, succeed in her challenges will earn their rightful place in the hero's game. Some see this band of adventurers for hire as mere mercy. Others insist they are true heroes, men and women, who prize honor even more than gold, who seek above all else to protect the king. Each player, select a unique profession from the list below and write it in the player box uh, of your character. There is animal train tamer. Uh, let's see, nurtures. Nurtures a deep bond with their familiars. A blacksmith is an expert in the use of craft and weapons. A bodyguard uses armor to protect their companions. Gambler takes ri take risks to gain bountiful rewards. Herbalist is capable of absorbing powerful effects. Inventor manipulates their many uh, mechanisms and trinkets that aid them in their journey. Jeweler is the master of magical <laughs> crystals and uh, enchanted gems, and a miner has a knack of discovering heavy treasures in deeper path. So record each player's profession in the profession um, titles section of the party journal. And read each following entry that matches the profession for any player. Well, I've already pre-selected. So um, my uh, my elf hunter is actually going to be an herbalist. Just writing that in. And my beast master is going to be an animal tamer. Why not? Not a beast master for nothing. So let's start with him because he is first up. Animal tamer. If playing with more than one player, pass the storybook to someone other than the Animal Tamer player and have them read the following entry aloud. Here you go, Kanji. Thank you. Thanks, Kanji. Uh, so, you must have eaten moss for breakfast, or so your mother would say. A giddy, nervous feeling flutters around inside your gut. Today is the day you join the Heroes Guild and set out to tame the wildest beast. Even as a child, you had the gift. Mice and birds with your, your hands. Snorting bold bull would calm at your touch. Your parents think you will make a great stable master, but you have loftier ambitions. In larks hopping <laughs> sorry, in larks hopping hops, animal animagical kinship that one word, you discovered this passage. Hound hell. A, myst a mystical beast with soulless eyes and fur for flames, summoned by burning immortal flesh Flash of innocent blood. 
If safety is a concern, summon to a place very cold. The Hellhound has never been Never been tamed? There is an enticing aura to these to those words. The tame Hellhound would <laughs> would put your name on every bard's lips and secure your place as the greatest animal master Ulos has ever known. You have the talent. All that remains is to gather the ingredients and find the right plate. Once you pass today's challenge, enter away. Animal Tamer player, reveal rare card 154 and place it next to your character. So, rare card. So, this is the new rare card deck. I kept it separate from the ones that I have. And it says, uh, 154. I don't have one. <laughs> I do lie to Or do I have it? Well, Oh, here we go. 154. All right. So I got Soothe, Animal Tamer. Uh, during advancement, reveal a card from the familiar deck. Only you, only you, many buy this card. Once again, preview. Only you may buy this card. Okay. Whenever you play a familiar card, add one stamina to this card. Return one stamina from this card to the supply to flip any number of familiar dice in the dice pool. Huh. Okay, so I got a nice little ability. So that is my ability. Uh, when I zoom out, you'll see it next to the card. Uh, Animal Tamer Player, if you do not have a familiar card in your hand, bubbing, baboom. <laughs> I do. If you do not have a familiar card in your hand, reveal a random familiar card from the deck and add it to your hand, then return a card from your hand to its deck. I'm good. Read the next section below that matches the profession for any player. If you read all matches, then you can go to Adventure Begin. So our next one is her, and she is an herbalist. All right. So if playing with more than one player, pass the storybook to someone other than the herbalist. Here you go. Can't you? Thank you, can't you? Um, the happy voices in the streets outside your shop match the excitement you feel within. After many years, you finally unlock the secret to a powerful formula of absorption. You chug down your glowing concoction of petal dust and mold spores and feel its effects instantly. Dizzying waves of hunger course through your body. You grab a nearby bouquet of toxic henvine and start munching. Sure enough, it tastes heavenly. And here you are, still alive with a tiny sprout growing from the back of your hand. Your potion works. This means that you can now assimilate the properties of whatever you eat. You can safely eat anything, and whatever you eat will taste amazing, but you don't know how long the effect will last. To make the most of this time, you must travel around Ulos, tasting the world one bite at a time, and seeing what sort of strange powers you can acquire. <laughs> You're a, you exit your shop and join the crowds. Today you will be joining the Heroes Guild and travel to far off places eating everything you can along the way. This, this sounds, sounds bad. Uh, Herbalist player, reveal rare card 158. Alright. So we've got 158, which is the tune. At the beginning of combat or a skill check, Set a skill die or trait card from your hand near this card. When the dice event is completed, return it to your hand. You may play any card from your hand as a copy of the set aside card. Ooh. Whenever you rest, return one additional stamina from your fatigue box to the supply. Ooh. I like that. That's actually cool. Okay. We're done, and we're ready to do our adventure begin. So let me zoom out so you can see. So basically, I've got his soothing here. Um, and we will look at the tools. Of so during the first adventure of Gold uh professions provide unique abilities and special encounters for each player. Profession abilities should be displayed face up next to the player's character sheet and are always, and are always active. If activated during the manipulate and place dice step of a skill check or combat, their use does not count against the play limit. Oh. Players may not exhaust themselves when using profession ability. 
Her fashion ability cards are stored along with the character's uh, hand, so they're always active. So basically, at the beginning of combat for a skill check, set a skill or trait card from your hand near this card. When the dice event is completed, return it to your hand. Cool, so it's a, so it's a flip effect. You may play any card from your hand as a copy of the set-aside card. <laughs> you may be very dangerous. Okay, here's I'm gonna have to figure out because it says during advancement. So when we're when we're leveling, reveal a card from the familiar deck, and only you can buy that card. It also has when you play a familiar card, add one stamina to this card, and return one stamina from this card to the supply. Oh, so basically he wants to play familiars so that he builds up stamina on this card, and then what he can do is he can spend a stamina. To flip a die. I see. Very, very. Okay. The adventure begins. You hear screams coming from the main uh, boulevard. Are there boulevard in there? Anyway. Racing towards their sit, their cries of distress, you discover a bloody trail of corpses. A beast claws its way swiftly through the crowd. Festival, festival, girl, ugh, festival goers trample over each other in an attempt to escape. The immortal knight is thrown from her saddle when her horse rears, kicking its front legs wildly. Here, here you catch a better glimpse of the assailant as it slashes the horse's flank. It's a werewolf, a creature whose existence you've thought to be a myth. It barrels towards an old woman. If you move swiftly, you might be able to save her from the werewolf's wrath. Skill check! Quick this one! So, skill checks, for people who've never played Roleplayer, is you got this book of the skill check book. It's in alphabetical order, so I can flip the cube. Is it quickness? Yeah, quickness. Hey, what's going on, Steve? Uh, they're nice. They're doing physical scenario books. I just got Lance and Blaze here. They did digital storybook. It works great as well, but some people don't like devices. That's true, John. Also have Blaze here. I do wish... For a non version, but I'm just yeah, I have the game too. I just haven't played it yet. So when you have when you have the skill check that's happening, it's going to be a quick check one. So it says it's one here. The dice limit is four, and this is what we have. Okay, very important thing. And Kate, I need your help. Uh, and Chad, I need your help. I am colorblind to this thing here. When they their colors of Blue and purple, I can't distinguish between them. I've already said, put the name or the, the title of what the color is as text above the dang thing. So otherwise, I can't read it. All right, so you got black, purple, and black, purple. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, thank you. Is this a skill check from the base game or from the expansion? This skill check book, Janet, is from the base game, but you will get a, sp you will get a skill check book from the expansion. This one is just using the base game. All right, so thank you so much. Yeah, I've already told them. I'm like, I can't, I, can, I cannot distinguish those colors. I'm not joking. <laughs> so you need to put it in text for people who are colorblind. That if you put the text above the box, then it helps, right? Anyway, uh, the dice limit is four. Eight times faster than I do. So the dice limit is four for what we need to get. Um, let me see if I can make it all work. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. So the dice limit is four for what we need to do. Um, and what we can do is we can look at our boards and we can say, okay, we can manipulate what dice we get. Well, I need a black die and I need a purple die. Well, they're pretty good with it, so I could spend two, and then you have to spend from both or two from one. It doesn't matter. So basically, I can say he's going to spend two. Both his two fatigue them to, to choose a purple die, or since they both have one, they both can spend one, and I can pull out and add to the dice pool a purple die. I need a black die, and yeah, I can do that. Both of them will do it. There'll be a black die. And then I need a black or purple die. I can't afford either one of those. So um, I could spend three of any other or 
one of those. I have the same issue in artificial light hand typing. It may, it, it, it happens outside too for me, Mike. Like me and my son constantly argue about the color of my car. Because <laughs> I tell him my car is green. He says it's blue. So it, it, it's, it's what it is. I've accepted that's, that's what it is. I just have to live with it, you know? All right, so I'm going to draw two more random. The two other dice from the dice limit random. And let's see what we get. Got a red. Come on, black. Come on, black. And a green. That does not help. And then we're going to roll these dice. Oh, yes. And these dice roll All right. Let's see how we do. Oh, that's a lot of poop. Uh, let's see what we can do. So after that, first thing you do is you place what you can in the necessary locales. But since not all of that is hot garbage, um, we are going to we are going to then start using our cards. So each player, because of the um, play limit in the on the journal, which is over here, it says that my play limit is two. So each player can only play two cards, and I've got a bonus play if I need it. I think I kind of want to pass this test. So uh, let's see. What can we do? You can add a die. You can turn any five into any color. I don't need a five. Um, you can flip a white die. I don't have a white die. You could turn uh, a three to a one or a six. No, but I need it to be purple. <laughs> let's see. Reroll a blue or green, increase a blue die, <laughs> increase a blue, increase a blue or green die by one or two. Mm, that's increasing. And a black die, I can tick it up or down with the harpoon. That might be helpful for you. What should you got? Yeah, I need, I need a black six. Yeah. So I'm looking to see if I could convert anything into a black color. Uh, this one, I could turn a purple into any color. That could work. At five. I could turn a four to a two or a six. I can flip on the runic necklace. Play any number of additional runic cards. Da, 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 da. So I can reroll or flip a green die. If I could turn a green die to a purple, that would be great. And I can increase a red die with that. Um, what? I can use my ability to reroll purple and hope that I get one. Hmm. <laughs> use a die in a die pool, then discard any number of skill cards from uh, each. For each card discarded, increase it by one. I would have to discard three cards to get that. But I just need to flip this and turn it purple. And then tick that down one, and that will work. So, I, do. I can turn a three into a six, like you said, so I can make the black three. Uh, what was it? You need a black six, the three to six card for black die. Harpoon to a four, then turn four to six. Well, he need a black four too. Yeah, I need to. This gets me the black six, guaranteed. This gets me the black six. So that's the card that we can play. But how can I get? I could turn that five to any color, or I could turn. I think that's all I got. Or I could re-roll. So let's take a look at we've got one guaranteed. We've got the three to six. You need to flip green, red to purple and then flip to a one. Yeah. I can this can re-roll. This can re-roll, but that's not going to help me any, and that's increasing red. Red's not going to help me. That card's no good. I could introduce a green-white, but that won't do anything other than head to that card. I can silver warthog to a blue-white. Once again, 
not helpful. Um, purple to any color. We just need to turn pick purple up once and then flip it. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Ooh, this is a toughie. This is a tough puzzle with this bad roll. Or, if I could get purple, if I get, if I can get purple to a three, I can make it, I can make it a, a one, but then that leaves the four. <laughs> this is so hard. I can do the black four. I can do a black four. Can I turn anything? Ah. Choose a die in the dice pool, then discard any number of skill cards. For each card discarded, increase that die number by one. My thing is I need to be able to turn one of those that uh, one of those colors black and I can solve this whole thing. How do I turn that? I have a white die. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have it. I don't have it. Make green or red to five and then swap any color with what? A green, red. Oh, if I can, it, you mean if I could tick it down, I could change it black and then tick it back up. So it's kind of like these three cards need to get played. However, I need to tick down green. This increases, not decreases green. So these three, so the bonus play might get used if that works. However, I can tick it down with Hunted. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I can use my ability to, it says to increase a die, not decrease. For each that I increase that die by one. I can't take it down. Can you add a die? Um, I could. I can add a black and blue. But it can't be coming from her. She needs to be able to do three. For the plan y'all are talking about. Um, I can add... You say I could turn it purple if I can make it a four and then turn it to a or no, I just need to make it I just need to make it purple and a four. I can add a blue white and I can add a green white. Neither one of those colors are helpful for me. I can add one and then re-roll and hope. Yeah. Hmm. Are we failing out the gate because of my bad dice rolling? I can add a black blue. But once again, as I said, I need her to be able to play three cards because y'all's plan is basically I need to make that five of black or make some color get one of these colors <laughs> to to go down to five make it a black and then take it down one and then spend this three to turn it into six leaving the leaving us to just worry about the purple card or or at the beginning of... Oh, ooh, what about the herbalist ability? At the beginning of combat or a skill check, um, which is what we're doing, set a skill or trait card from your hand near this card. When the dice event is completed, return it to your hand. So we'll get it back. But it says you may play any card from your hand as a copy of the set-aside card. Could be this. But once again, I'd still need... That could work. Which card would I set aside? 
You can lower purple by one. You lower no, I wish I could. I wish I could. That's what I was trying to work out. Oh, already rolled too late for herbalists. You're oh at the beginning of it before anything. Yeah, you're right. Uh Well, let's get some XP. <laughs> how about that? Let's work out how to get some XP. So we could turn that. I'm going to turn that three to six with this. I'll spend that as discard. This will become a six. Four. Actually, no, I won't. Because that could become a four. That could become a four. And then I could try to roll and hope I get a six. That's the best I got. I could take that down and make it a four. And then I could try to re-roll and get a six. If I get a three, I, 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 can, I can make it something. So let's try that. Oh, why am I doing this to myself? So I'm going to play this one to tick down that black, or tick up that black three to a four. And it has the spent icon, so spent. So I'm going to turn it upside down on spending. So this will become a four. Okay. Then, yeah, any, any whatsoever. All right, let's do it. We're gonna spend this other one. Shadow Drake, spending black blue. We're gonna get. I gotta do it the other way around. Oh no, there's a six on here. I was like, is there not a six on here? There's a six on here. Uh. This will make me so angry if I roll a four. Let's see what happens. What do you think I rolled? A four! <laughs> Damn it! Ah, why does this game hate me? Okay, what do you got? I'm supposed to, oh, let's make that four a six. <laughs> How about that? Let's make that four a six with concentrate. Pick, boom. And then we just need to get a one. <laughs> uh, we just need to get that five, that five to a one. That's increasing. That's, I, I could spend his Beastmaster ability to re-roll and hope that it's it's something. Uh, only green. Why are your cards not purple related? You're a purple person. Um, you you can't help me. You can't help me. You can't help me. Nope. Can't help me either. I can flip you to green, but I can't do anything about converting you from green to anything. What about you? I can reroll purple. See what happens. I could turn purple into purple. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know what to... That's what I'm trying to find out. What can I use? I can flip something, it'll become a two if I use the bonus, but it, I can't tick it down. That's the, that's the problem, I can't, I can't get the one. I want to roll a one. I may use my Beastmaster ability to re-roll that purple. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my Beastmaster ability, uh, re-roll any number of purple dice or familiar dice in the dice pool. I'm going to use that ability, flip it over. Reroll this purple. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, buddy. Woo! <laughs> Got it. Got it. All right, so we succeed. When we succeed, we get 2 XP. So we grab our 2 XP. Going to add that over to our XP sheet. <sighs> oh my gosh. You strike the werewolf. It's that. Uh, so you strike the werewolf. Begin one. <laughs> Rick dies. <laughs> it, it was a candy roll, Janet. You're right. It's, uh, my, my bad rolling saved me. You managed to place yourself in the werewolf's past. Werewolves. I hear it when people say werewolf. It's not a werewolf. It's a werewolf. The werewolf's path. Slashing it through the chest with your blade. The beast howls with pain, licking, licks its wounds as it scampers off. The old woman thanks you with a, with a smile. Record the keyword wounded. All right. Continue. Begin three. As quickly as it appeared, the beast vanish, vanishes into the alley while the immortal knight's seed thrashes about wildly. After kicking a path through the crowd, the horse runs off. Place the party marker at location A. Party marker. Location A. And I get the XP. <laughs> uh, read entry A. Garden of Heroes. If there is no XP at the location A1, there was. Otherwise, collect the XP from the location and continue reading. Uh, if any player has the Animal Tamer profession, I do a two. Oh, after, 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 after. I forgot. So how the story works is I have to go back there to make this work. It goes in top-down order. So if you look here, it says, if there's no XP, do that. Otherwise, collect the XP from this location and continue reading. Going down to the next one on the list. If, the, if any player has the Animal Tamer profession, a2, then you immediately go to A because I do have that. Uh, you race after the Immortal Knight's steed, finding it bucking nervously in a nearby alley. You approach the panicked animal calmly, smoothly, and making a soothing gesture with your hand. So, the horse backs away nervously at first, but soon calms and allows you to take its rein. When you return her horse, a grateful Immortal Knight thanks you before turning her attention back to the assembled crowd. Candidates for the Heroes Guild have gathered at the town center to compete in the Test of Champions. Though a few are seasoned warriors, most are ordinary civilians, farmers, merchants, and artists, seeking a life of adventure. Ordinarily, the Immortal Knight announces, each of you would undergo a series of challenges to test your strength and courage. But these are not ordinary times. Tensions between Dragul rebels and the new Queen of Nalos are growing, and now a monster is on the loose in Wildwood. So I'll make this simple. Whoever tracks down the werewolf by day's end will be welcome to join the guild. But be warned, this is no game. I cannot guarantee your safety. There is no dishonor in refusing my challenge. Mutters of disbelief spread through the crowd at this unusual turn of event. But no one leaves, and the would-be heroes quickly split off into Animal Tamer player, increase your Wisdom Attribute score by 1, ignoring the usual limit, and add 1 Stamina to your Wisdom Attribute by it. A, 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 too legit. I'm going up to 3! Alright, alright. If there is only one character, A3. If there are more than one character in your party, A4. I haven't been able to rest yet. I want to get my cards back. <laughs> um, though each of you comes from a different background, you all eagerly agree to work together. The Immortal Knight smiles. You may have started this journey as strangers, she says, but now you are comrades in arms apart from your family. There is no greater bond. Yet your team feels incomplete. Glance around, you spot a halfling and a knoll. <laughs> Both are still looking for a group to join. The halfling carries a half dozen smoke bombs on his leather belt. 
He wears a black cloak and hides in the shadows of a tree. The knoll is the tallest of the contestants. He sharpens his blade against one of the statues, carving thick gro grooves into the marble. Both stand apart from the crowd. Who do we want to pick in our party? This sounds like time for a poll from the group. Engage your audience with a poll. <laughs> and y'all will tell me who's coming, the knoll or the gnome? So, who to choose? Knoll or gnome? And ask. Alex McGibbon. <laughs> That's awesome. So, who do y'all want to join? And I'm going to get a drink of water. Choose wisely. He's got smoke bombs. Can't be too bad. All right. And while y'all do that, I'll clean up from the test. All right. You ready? Good. Everybody voted. All right. Let's see what's happening. <laughs> All right, end poll. Here we go. We've got the halflings coming with us. The gnome. Okay. Team up with the halfling. A5. The name is Polgor, the halfling says, extending his hand. Polgor, good weather. A burned scar covers nearly the entirety of Polgor's head. When he catches you staring at it, he smiles, his green eyes sparkling with mischief. A boiling hot elixir, he explained. A childhood accident. My parents were both alchemists, but maybe I should start telling people my head was scorched by dragon breath. It'd make a better story, right? The gnoll snarls at you as he moves to join another group. <laughs> I'm going to kill him later. Polgar leans over and whispers, That's Awok. Took the test of champions last year. I heard he, I heard he ate one of the other competitors. The halfling shrugs. I mean, probably just a rumor. The immortal knight nods approvingly once the team have been formed. A number of witnesses to the werewolf pack have gathered at the festival. Each of you will be provided with a free ticket. Perhaps someone who, uh, someone there knows where the creature went. If you want to interview the wounded, they've been gathered at the house of. Uh, Alarchists, the elvish noble, uh, nobles have set up an infirmary in their grand hall. Reveal discovery card 128. Why are these set aside? Who did this? I have it says 138. 138. 130. Yeah, reveal card 130. Okay. Got the ticket. The Festival of Heroes. It costs one stamina to get. So that is the ticket that is with us. Right here. Group loot. Um, reveal rare card 111 and place it face up next to the active space of the party journal. Card 111. Polgor! During a skill check or each round of combat, each player may play one scroll card that does not count against the play limit. Thank you, Polgor. Good choice, team. Good choice. Here. All right. Um, reveal title card one eighty. Uh, that must be in my deck. Right in here. Oh no, here. Uh, so <laughs> the one did not set it right. One eighty three title. Polgor Comrade. Uh, you teamed up with 
Polgor, the halfling, uh, by tracking down the werewolf, you uh, you helped him earn his spot in the Heroes Guild. So that is a title card that will go right there. Game. And if any player has the gambler profession, go to A9. I am not a gambler. Um, so use an item or move to another location. Um, we're going to the House of Alarcus because I feel that the herbalist might be of use there. So when we go, I can actually go this way to get to it instead of going through a monster. <laughs> Uh, so they give you options, but let's do the encounter. So we're going to go here to the encounter. Sorry. So we start here in the Garden of Heroes. There's dots that lets us go. Oh, no, there's not. I'm either going this way or I'm going this way. Another way. So I'm going this way. And let's see what we're dealing with. We're dealing with encounter adventure number two. So we go to the book. Of the Explorer's Guide. I think it's the Explorer's Guide. Festival of Heroes 2. Um, Queen soldiers wander from house to house searching for the werewolf. As they pound on the doors, a frog kin flags them down. His blue black vest jacket is so tight on him that the golden buttons seem ready to burst. They won't leave, he explains, uh, waving the eviction orders. They threaten to kill me, Ribbit. The soldiers follow him to a ramshackle house in the alley. It's Gorip, the landlord, the frogkin announces nervously. Open up! Say what? <laughs> uh, a large family of gnolls emerges with kitchen knives and pitchforks, pushing the guards back into the street. It seems they will not vacate their home without a fight. Just then, the immortal knight appears. Both the queen's guard and the gnolls bow respectfully when they see her. The famed adventurer is respected by both loyalists to the crown and the crack. One of the gnolls races over to the knight, pleading for her to intervene. The fraudkin scoffs. They are three weeks late on their rent, he explains. The law on these matters is quite clear. So, if I have the title Polgor's Comrade, go to A16, which I do. Polgor shakes his head. It's unfortunate, he admits, but these soldiers are just doing their jobs. Polgor already. We can't ignore the law when it's inconvenient. Yes, Gorp agrees eagerly. Quite right. Shut up, Polgor snaps. Okay, I like him again. No one was talking to you. I said that we should honor the law. That doesn't make us friends. You should be ashamed of yourself evicting a family on the day of the festival. The frogkin smiles unapologetically and shrugs. It's just business. The Immortal Knight appears conflicted. <laughs> I know. The Immortal Knight appears conflicted. The eviction orders are perfectly legal, she admits. But are they just? She turns to you. No, don't turn to me. If you join the Heroes Guild, you will find yourself forced to make difficult decisions. What do you think we should do? Encourage the... Uh, so should we follow the law or defend the family's home? <laughs> Y'all are deciding this. And <laughs> so let me put up a poll. So should we... What to do? Follow the law, uh, uh, respect my authority, or help the family. And ask. Poll's going up. Pour water. Bring on the water. Here's what y'all gonna pick. I mean, Kanji, I'm probably gonna follow the rebel path again so <laughs> So we'll see, we'll see. I'm just gonna give it a minute and then we'll we'll do it. Uh never help the <laughs> Never help the feds. That's amazing. <laughs> I'll help the man. 
All right, I'll go ahead and end it now. Let's see what we got. Info. So we are going to help the family. Okay. Ask her to help the families defend their homes. We're going to 111. Whatever the law. Oh, God. Whatever the law. What have y'all done? What have y'all done? <laughs> what would have happened otherwise? Whatever the law may be, it is unjust to remove a family from their home against their will. The Immortal Knight sees the wisdom of your position, and she asks the soldier to disperse. At least, until she's had a chance to appeal to the king personally. But the soldiers have their orders. They're prepared to remove the family from their home no matter who stands in their way. They charge forward, and you are quickly drawn into a battle. Reveal rare card 133 and place it face up next to the active space of the party journey. 133. Oh. That's the discovery card. One, rare card one. Rare card 133. Embry. Each time a skill card is played, return one stamina from the player's fatigue box to the supply. And tumble. And then uh, we are going to combat. One thirty-three. Uh, combat a gang of humans. Twenty-eight. So we gotta find uh, twenty-eight gang of humans. So this is from this twenty-eight is from the um, from the base game. And the gang of modifiers also from. I'll show you all that stuff. I know I'm zoomed in. I haven't forgotten about you. So we've got humans. What? So there is green and black and whatever else the other two colors are. <laughs> I'm going to say it's purple and purple. <laughs> I don't know. But green and black. And Ganga says, during the first round of this combat, the combat dice limit is reduced to one. Oh, barf. What's the order, though, Dragon? Is it, is it blue and purple? Or is it blue and purple? I know y'all think I'm kidding. I'm not. Uh, blue two. Okay, blue two, purple three. All right, thank you. All right, so let's put this here, and they've got gang of. So the combat dice limit is, for the first round of combat, I'm only rolling one die. All right. Um, and it says, uh, at the beginning of combat, or a skill check, let me not forget about my ability. At the beginning of combat, or a skill check, um, set a skill or trait card from your hand here, and I can... So we need a five. Okay. We need a th that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Reroll might be cool. I'm gonna put the reroll there. And that's what I get. Let me check the rule book on. Been a minute. I played. I think that's. I think I'm still fatigued from the skill task. That is armor. Oh, it is armor. Ugh. Head gamut. You're absolutely right. Got to be a skill. After a skill test, if I get my cards back. I know after combat I don't, but I don't know if after a skill. Uh, skill tips, fill the dice pool, resolution. Uh, no matter the outcome of skill test, gain rewards uh, for covered dice slots. Return all dice to the dice bag and all modifiers cards to the modifier deck. Each player returns all cards from their discard pile to their hand. Okay, so I would get concentrate back. Uh, if the rest token on the party journal is face down, put it face up, and then continue on. So, nope, I am where I'm at. I am where I am. So I would at least get my discard back. 
but my spent cards are gone. My two spent cards that can help me with anything are gone. Okay, so I need to put a skill. This isn't going to help me. That's a trait. That's only for white dice, which I don't need. That's a weapon, that's an armor, so it won't help. Okay, this might be a loss already. I don't have any... I can, I can do greens. Get a green die. That's all I could do. I got three rounds, you're right. I got three rounds. Let me get the round counter. Nothing's happening right now. And it says during the first round of combat, the combat dice limit is reduced to one. So instead of rolling three, rolling one. Let me roll my green and see what I got. Actually, let me just roll blind. Let me put that green back. And I'll spend green next time. Let me just roll blind. Roll blind for the first die. What do I got? Purple. Okay. That is not what I need at all. <laughs> okay. So. I make it green. I do that. Cover up one damage. But I need a two. Ooh. He's going to hit me for six, seven damage. I don't do something about that purple. You are a purple person. Why do you have nothing? Bad. Um. Who was on that side? I'm about to take seven damage in the face. Nine damage in the face. That's what I think I'm about to take. You have a card. You have a card five can be any color. I know I'm thinking of doing, I was thinking of doing this and putting the five here to knock off one, but I'm still going to take six damage. I was looking to reduce the, um, I was looking to reduce the five to a three, so at least I take four instead of six, but I don't think it can help. That's all I was looking at. I don't think it can be helped. I think I'm going to take six damage to the face. Uh, choose the die. I only increased that number. All right, let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. We're going to spend this card to turn it. Um, Turn it to a purple. Animal Handler brings in Animal Dice. It does. Ain't wrong about that. He's got two cards. He would burn them both. He would burn them both. No, I don't. I could bring dice into the roll now. I could burn. I, I could just use his two turns to see what I get, and then have her deal with the rest. I do need greens. I do need blues. So this could work. And when I do that, whenever you play a familiar card, I get to add a stamina, which return one stamina from this card to the supply. Uh, any number, so I can flip the dice if I need. Could work. Let's try it out. I'm going to I'm going to play these are his two plays so I'm going to do a that that oh I did put this in here didn't I? not smart which would give me whenever you play a familiar card I play two you're you add two stamina minus one for each card. You mean minus one? Uh, I don't know if you're saying the same thing I'm saying. I'm confused. I'm going to reroll these. 
Well, I'm not re-rolling the roll these. <laughs> they have the wrong type. Um, so the four... The two I can actually flip. I can flip the two to a five. There should be a five on this side. Yes, it is. I did. I did add two. What are you talking about? What did I do wrong? All right, so I've got the green covered, unless I can convert. Something to something. <laughs> uh, boom. Got it. Got it. I'm good. I got it. I got I was able to stave off four damage. I got it. All right. Check me out. He played. He played. He played the two cards to get the two dice. Right? He's then going to spend one of this stamina. Return one stamina from this card to the supply. Flip this two to a five. Five's covered. Then he's going to spend his bonus, the bonus play token. So that is exhausted. I'll put it up here in the exhaust. I'll put it wherever I threw it. I'll put it up here for exhausted. Or flip it over. How about that? Flip it over. <clears throat> to play four to a two. Concentrate. So this four turns into a two. And that two goes on that. Now, I'm going to need you, my good friend. I'm going to need you to find a way to make that 5 3. <laughs> That's what I'm going to need you to do. I think what this card does is it flips. And then it lets you add two, two white dice. I think that's what this card does. Flip a die and then add two white dice. I think. Need the rule book to tell me if I'm right. Flip a die to this opposite side. No, is it flip two white dice to this opposite side? Is that what it is? It flips two white dice. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yep, you said it. You you got it right. It's right here in the rules. It's right here. Flip. So it would flip two white. You're right. Um, how do I make a dollar out of fifteen cent with this? Um, I think we're just gonna have to take three damage, five damage actually. Okay, he did. I have nothing to mitigate purple. Nothing. I'm so worried for myself. Um, how do I turn it five into three? <laughs> I got nothing to do that. Nothing at all. Just checking for round two. I could turn a purple into any color, but I need it to be purple. I could spend three wisdom to get a purple die next round. That's what I can do. Yeah, yeah. So um, we will end our round here. I'm going to take three damage um, to both of them. And then when I move here, when the round starts, I'm going to take two more. So that's five. I'm gonna just take the five, five hit on both of them. So both of them is gonna get a five fatigue added. Ah, uh, that's not fun. And then we're gonna go to round. Now we're gonna start this round. Fun you doesn't stay, or doesn't? I don't think it's. Man, it's been a minute. I don't think it's stay. Um. Suffer counterattack, apply round track effect, return remaining dice to the pool to the pool bag, and start again. Yep. So that's 
So let's see what the first two dice are that I'm getting. What are the first two dice I'm getting on, on this one? One. Um, <laughs> building the dice pool. It's been a minute. Uh, let's see. If the players collectively do not have enough stamina in the matching attribute row, they may substitute stamina from other attribute rows in place of stamina at a ratio of three to one. Oh, so it's just any. Oh, never mind. I wouldn't have done that. Take it back. Yeah, spend that purple. So I'm going to do three wisdom right here. Get a purple. I'm going to do... We're just going all out here. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have to be careful. Um, three here. Add another purple. And... I think I gotta go wild for the last one. That blue should have been there. Let me put it back. Uh, let's see what we get. Hey, look at that. Luck of the draw. All right, let's see how we do. You can do nothing because this is for red, this is for green, and this turns anything into a purple. So we're going to have to try it on the last one. Fives can be any color. Nope. Threes. Nope. Blue, green. Nope. Mystic Owl. Nope. This. Nope. I don't have any cards that can help my situation if you're wondering what cards I have again. Nothing touches that. Nothing. So. Cool. Gonna take three damage. I lose this fight because of this foolish. There's nothing I could do. All right, round three. <laughs> I have nothing to mitigate that. Nothing. Um. Trying to think. Characters are going to die before the game even starts. Dang it. So they have one, two, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, five, six, seven, eight. Twelve. They get hit again, they both die. So that was the three, and now we lose two more gold on the final round, so that goes to the five starter that we have. Two, three. Final round. I I don't have the stuff to give, so it is what it is. One, two, three. Oh, geez, OP, just give me a three. Come on. I hate this game. <laughs> I hate this game so much. <laughs> All right, so I defeated the gang on the on the final round. Um, I gained one gold and one experience. One experience, one gold. So I've got four going for me, and we won. So. Let's see. <laughs> Yay? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's exactly how it should be. Yay. <laughs> Hopefully a rest option soon. So these two will go back here. Right. And y'all are defeated. 
All right, so the guards are beaten back. Go to 118. Though, uh, though the soldiers are outmatched, the gnolls fear they have little to celebrate. The moment you leave, they will return, one explained. The immortal knight nods her head solemnly. I can't make any promises, she admits, but I will speak to the queen on your behalf. Perhaps she will listen to reason. Uh, the gnolls are skeptical, but they thank you and the immortal knight for your efforts. Gain one experience. Oh, I'm about to rest, like you wouldn't believe. Uh, return the Embry ally card to the rear deck. It was just for a skill check. Each time a skill card is played... Oh, I could have done it in this... Yeah, I did play one. Return one stamina from the player's board to the feed supply. I could have used it. I did not. All right, cool. Um, remove the other encounter token from the adventure map and return it to... Remove the other encounter token from the adventure map, so it's this one, and return it to the board. Okay. If any player has dueler profession, advance to 120. Otherwise, rest! Yes, please! Um, I'm actually going to spend three... <laughs> three cubes to rest. That's right, three. That means I get to roll three dice. You know my dice rolling. And on those three dice is how much fatigue we're going to lose. Spend three X speed. Big spender. But you know how I roll. Like that! So that's for you. Two. Four. So just one and the five goes away. Actually, is that for everybody? I think that's for everybody. That's not just for me. The rest thing. I think that's for everybody, or is that for? Uh, each player draws dice from the bag equal to the amount of the XP spent. Okay, so each player. So you've got a sad shake. What about Flavia? Nine. That's better. One, the five, six, seven. Okay. Cool. <laughs> it hurts sometimes. It hurts. We get stamina back. Oh, shoot. I pulled from here. There should have just been... You had 13. I took off 9. So... You have 4 left. Yeah. Shouldn't have taken from the fatigue. You get one, three. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five. This will go forward. Four. Get back all your cards. Put this over. Put that over. Uh, yes, you are right. These should be in the dice bag. All right. You're all right, Dragon. Eh. Here. I don't think they are. I don't think failures are in the dice bag. I think you might be, you might be mistaken on them. Let me look it up. Are familiars in the dice bag? Familiars! When a player gains a card from a familiar deck, find the familiar die and add it to the dice bag. First sentence. You're right. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay. We won't face humans again, so I'm just going to go over there. And we've rested. We got all our cards back. Poor sad sack. Um, that should stay. We're good. Cool. Okay, so we rested and then moved to next location on your path. So our next location we're going to is the House of Alark. Okay. That, that is House of Alark is, is C. If there is no XP at this location, read C1. Otherwise, collect the XP. 
And uh, continue reading. If there is an event token at this location, there is not. A dour-looking elf uh, dressed in red silk robes leads you into the Grand Hall. Enormous golden frame portraits of the elven high lords through the ages stare down at you from the purple walls. Dozens of ornate beds have been dragged out onto the tiled floor occupied by those injured in the werewolf attack. They bleed onto silk sheets and pillows as healers frantically make their way from um, from patient to patient, binding their wounds. The healers begin, belong to the Erthalian Order in recognition of their work. Queen Gimnex recently paid to have uh, monasteries built for the healers throughout her kingdom. They treat the wounded, but perhaps more importantly, they devote themselves to research in the hopes of curing diseases and preventing their spread. A member of the Order hands you a bottle. She seems to have mistaken you for one of her own. Only as a last resort, she shouts before hurrying over to another patient to the other side of the room. Uh, reveal discovery card 137. Poison bottle costs one for each play. Okay, the so poison on the ticket. Let's see what that does. All right, if you have Polgor, Polgor's comrade, which we do, go C4. Uh, Polgor unlocks the bottle of poison, sniffing it. Then, before you can stop him, he takes a swig. Hmm, I've had worse. As your eyes widen with alarm, he smiles. Relax, he says. My parents were both al alchemists. I built up an immunity to most poisons by the time I was sick. As you wander around the infirmary, Polgor lets out a loud whistle. There's something strange about these patients. Have you noticed it? You glance around the room, trying to figure out what Polgor's talking about. Skill check. Observation one. So greens and whites is the skill check. Skill check is here. I can see greens and whites. So greens and whites. Greens and whites. Okay. So let's get here. Um, cool. We can add a white die for sure. The die limit, of course. We can add a white die. We can add a green die. Yeah, I can see the greens and white ones. It's the it's the blues and purples that tear me up. Like this this here, I don't know what color that is. It could be whatever. Um and I think that's all we're gonna and then we're gonna go wild for the other two. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I may now use my herbalist before the ooh, I may now lose. We could do the flip white, but I might need that card. Oh, I could use other cards like it. So it's it's a skill. So I'm gonna use um, it's a skill. So I'm gonna use uh, search. So I can spend other cards to act like that card. Okay. So I'm gonna rando the last two. One. Okay, it says Pulgor has his ability also that says during a skill check or each round of combat, each player may play one scroll card that does not count against the play limit. So if I have another scroll card, I could do that and it will count against the play limit. Oh, and I get my bonus playback. We'll rest. All right, let's see what we got. I need fours and two fives. All right, so we've got four here. And we could boost that five, up, uh, that four up to a five, but can I turn it? Or we could just play the longbow <laughs> and increase the green die by one or two. So we're going to play that. That should cover that five, and then we need to make that one of five. 
Uh, yeah, that'll work. Or she could just finish this out right now. Look at this. I increase with the longbow. I increase that green by one. And then I increase the black by one. And I turn that black to a white. And I'm done. But let's let's see what if we have to spend our, our special already. Let's see what else we can do. A four to a two or six. Reroll a green. To reroll a white. You know, let's try that. Let's try to just re-roll the white and see if we get lucky. Uh, the white, the flip of the white is gonna be a six, not a five. It's gonna be a six. If I flip this. Is Somebody taught me a trick about knowing what the other side is. Everyone knows that I just was clueless for my entire life until I play, until someone told me. <laughs> so anyway, let's increase the green. Uh, let's play this card. Uh, the longbow increase this to one. That covers that. And then um, we can re-roll the dice and see what happens. Let's see what happens when we re-roll the dice. So we're going to do the piece. Uh, yeah, the black is safe. That's our, that's our safe bet. Yeah, dice opposite side, seven total. Yep. So I'm going to play the, the, the chain vambers to re-roll the one to see if I can make it up. I try. Anyway, we're going to play Harpoon to turn this to a 5, and then we're going to use the bonus, flip it back to done, turn that 5 into a white 5 with this. Good. Breathe. It hurts my soul when that happens. Alright, so we solved that. We're going to get 2 XP on the XP box for it. Sorry. See? And we solve the problem. Solving the problem. Problem solved. Oh, and we use a rest. I need to mark off that we use one rest. Use one rest. I marked that off on the chart. Uh, you notice an unusual detail. C7. Besides the obvious fact that they are all that they all sustain their injuries during the werewolf attack, there's something strange about the patients gathering here. A surprising number of them have the same tattoo, a skull with the number three inscribed over its forehead. Good eye, Polgor exclaims happily. There's hope for you yet. If you're wondering what the iconography means, I'll tell you. It's the symbol of Shintal, the three-headed goblin god of death. What? The attacks weren't random. They were targeted. The werewolf wanted to hurt, hurt death wor worshippers. You interview a few of the death worshippers, but they are understandably tight-lipped when it comes to discussing the cult. The worship of Shintal has recently been outlawed in the Kingdom of Nalos. We've hit a brick wall here, Polgor admits. There's a tattoo shop near the festival. Maybe she'd let us take a peek at her client list. Place an, e place an event token on location B on the adventure map. Uh, location B is the festival, so that gets the token. Not blurry, but I put an event. Hey, my fellow cultists! <laughs> Record the keyword tattoo. Okay, record it. If any player has the bodyguard profession, ah, uh, what a terrible list. Whatever. I can rest again or use an item. What happens if I use poison? I don't want to poison myself. That would be bad. Maybe the herbalist might be able to do something with poison. Because I'm trying to sample everything. I'm trying to eat, drink everything. I'm not going to do it. Um, I probably should rest one more time. I'm going to rest one more time because I, a big fight's coming and I'm not ready. So I, I, this, this rest is getting crazy, but I'm, gonna, I'm using my second rest. And I'm spending, once again, spending three stinking XP, because you know how I roll dice. Uh, a common person, uh, someone who doesn't roll horribly, will spend two dice. We'll spend two and be fine. I need to spend one extra. 
tattoo of a pineapple. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Oh, so he just gets rid of the five. She's got seven, eight, nine, ten. So she clears it all. She clears all of her. So he's going to die. I got you. I got you. You want him to die. Two, one. All my cards back. XP is over. Who needs to level? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so we continue on. We continue on. We're going back to A. Let me get back to A. Uh, if there's no XP, go to A1. A few, of other, a few of the other teams are still here, planning their search for the werewolf. A trio consisting of a construct, a gnome, and a vargar pour over maps of, uh, wild, of wild wood, speculating wildly about where the best might be hiding. Um, we're going to move on to the festival, which is... B. Festival. If there's no XP at this location, go to B1. Otherwise, collect the XP and continue reading. Collect. Um, if there is an event token, go to B2. There is. Remove the event token from this location. If you have the keyword hunt, huh. a small army of constructs helps set up the enormous makeshift tents that soon fill the fairground. Their enormous creator, Gullpax the Crafter, is rumored to have used dark magic to bring them to life on the strange and dangerous force of the Ulos. Merchants here are selling every, Im every imaginable delicacy. Ooh. Entertainers cater to every whim. You want this? An orcish woman's voice calls out from behind you. That's yeah. She <laughs> Phrasing! Uh, she hands you a sweet roll from her booth. Everyone seems to have lost their appetite after the attack. No need for a ticket. Uh, for a ticket, just take it. Otherwise, it'll go stale. Uh, reveal discovery one thirty six. We've got. So what if I put poison in the sweet roll and give it to somebody? I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> Uh, as you search for search a tattoo shop, you notice a knoll arguing with an elvish merchant. The knoll is a wolf, one of your competitors in the contest of champions. She's a tyrant! A wolf snarls. The mad queen won't rest until every last tribe and city state is under her rule. Polgar grips the hilt of his sword, his eyes burning with fury. A wolf's statement against the monarchy is treasonous, and your halfling companion is ready to defend the queen's honor. Resolve the conflict peacefully without coming to blows, or help your companion teach a Wook a lesson. We're going peacefully. <laughs> your Beastmaster just rolls horribly. No, I roll horribly, Kate. We're going to try to re uh, resolve it peacefully, so we're going to go to B19. Probably. B19. You grab over Polgar's arm, preventing him from drawing his blade. A Wook smiles when he sees this. You're different from the others, he admits. No, I'm not. They'd rather kill me than consider the truth. The queen is building an empire. Commoners like you and me will be doing the fighting and the dying to realize her grand dream. If the Heroes Guild fails to live up to your expectations, you might consider joining the Drogul Alliance. You got the wrong one. <laughs> Polgar shakes his head. Queen Gimnax is a blessing from the gods, Polgar exists. She's done more for the people of Ulos than any ruler since the age of Azima. This, this is way too real. Anyone who curses her name deserves a pummeling as far as I'm concerned. But because we didn't beat the brakes off of him, Dry Goal reputation goes up one. Queen's reputation goes down one. We reveal title card 126. I am not going to join you. You got the wrong one. I'm going to kill you. Card <laughs> 126. 
or, or as 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 Mike as Mike has said before, you about to catch these hands. I look to respect. I don't want your respect. <laughs> uh, gain one XP. You get. Uh, continue to be twenty one. You make your way to the Talos, uh, to the tattoo shop at the edge of the fairgrounds. A bell rings when you push open the door, and a kobold greets you with a derisive snort from behind the counter. Her entire body is covered in ink, including a dragon tattoo covering her neck and shoulders. When she learns why you're here, she smiles. You'd be surprised how many of my customers are death worshippers. We all end up in in Paul's domain eventually. Seems like a good idea to get on his good side. But one stands out, a woman by the name of Ara Irta. I almost said Irata. Irta. She uh she had scratches and bite marks on her arm. Said she wanted to bear Shindal Shintal's sigil because he had given her the sanctuary. Or given her sanctuary. The temple of Shintal is on the other side of town, but it's been closed for weeks now. Holgar turns to you. Sounds like a promising lead. We should make our way. Take our way to the temple. As you exit the shop, you are once again surrounded by the sights and smells of the festival. Reveal discovery card 120. Discovery card 126 to the new locale. Which will go here. So something's breaking off. And then uh, reveal discovery card 139. Place next. Thirty-nine. Eco. Temple of Shintal. Okay, what else happens? Take the armor, skill, and weapon market decks and shuffle each of them separately. Reveal the top card of each deck. Shuffle this way. Place these cards face up next to the adventure map to create a market. While at the B location, you may buy cards from the market for the price minus one. If you buy a card, add it to the add it to one player's hand. If any player has the inventor or blacksmith, read on. Otherwise, you can buy stuff. All right, so we're doing the armor, skill, and weapon decks. Armor deck. Shuffle and reveal. Uh, reveal what the top card of you. Uh, 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 uh. We got ring of clarity. Yeah, I I think I might. I think I might. So ring of clarity. Move a card from your discard space or spend space to another player's. Cost four gold. I only got three. So that's armor. Let's look. Uh, these are scrolls. Do I do scrolls? Nope. Skills. Skill back. Oh, go back. That's horrible. Okay, what do we got? Knowledge. Um, eight minus my intellect. I would just seven plus minus six. I can't do that either. And then we're going to the other deck. Uh, weapon. Weapon deck. Great. Why? Great snow. Weapons. Yes. Excuse me. I wonder what item to try. I could try the ticket. So I could try the ticket. Okay, let's see if I can buy something. Nope. Power shield. <laughs> I would love to have this card, but I can't afford it because it's five and I only have three gold. So, no go. Okay, so uh, we can't buy an item. We can use an item. Um, the items that we have are, we have the ticket, the poison, and the speed roll. I'm thinking I'll have to put the poison in the speed roll, uh, but not here. I could use the ticket. 
Yeah, I'm gonna poison the sweet thing, but I think oh, excuse me. I think I wanna maybe I should do it now. But I don't wanna eat it. I just wanna hang on to it, which is why I'm scared that if I do it, I'm gonna it's gonna tell me that I can. So let's try the ticket. I'm gonna take a fatigue. We're gonna try the ticket 138. So B130. Uh, let's see where you hand your ticket to the construct standing at a stall at, at a small wooden yacht. What's your pleasure? He asked. There are a number of attractions here for you to enjoy. We can't chat, compete in the pie eating contest, visit Madame Xanth Xanath, the insectoid oracle, or explore the Hall of Mirrors. What do you want to do? Uh, can I do multi pole one? Can somebody add more than one? So, what the? What's the? We can uh pie eating. <laughs> uh the Oracle. Yeah, it's only let me do two. See if I'm maybe I'll add and do more if I gain popularity, but I could only do two. Um I'll do this. I'll do uh we'll just have to do one, two, or three for all. So if let's see, send me a one for pie eating, a two for the insectoid oracle, or a three for hall of mirror. Got the insectoid. Got the insectoid oracle. Drink some water. All right, insectoid oracle it is. Okay, well. We have. You step into the fortune teller's tent. An insectoid woman with four hands impressively shuffles two decks of cards simultaneously before carefully sending each deck back onto the polished wooden table in front of her. She accepts your ticket with a grunt and then uh, rapidly deals out cards from each deck, quickly filling the table. Then she holds up a blindfold. Do not be afraid, she says as she covers your eyes. I have assembled the cards, but only you have the power to you select seven cards, turning them over carefully. Then Madame Zanath reveals, removes the blindfold. To you, the revealed cards seem like just a jumble of images. A demon in a swamp. A metal man encased in ice. And a halfling king in flowing purple robes among them. It is difficult to piece together a coherent story. I see death and danger, the oracle admits. Not just for you, but for all of Ulos. You must do what you feel is right, but whatever choice you make, you will wind up hurting someone you care about. She shakes her head. I'm sorry. May the fates guide you. Find the spec find speculate in the skill deck and add it to any player's hand. Skill deck. Find speculate. Speculate says that you can roll a die and return stamina from one player's fatigue box out to the supply. Um, I'll give it to. I'll give it to uh, her. Okay, what else happens? Return discovery card one thirty eight discovery deck. So no longer the ticket. 
and one shot at that. And continue B to B24. Before you leave the festival, the construct you handed the ticket to tracks you down. I'm sorry, he says, but did you drop this? He holds up a small leather satchel. Some, someone seems to have left it at my kiosk, and you were one of the last to drop by. You don't recognize the, sat the satchel, but you, you're curious what might be inside. Should we tell the truth or take the satchel? <laughs> Uh, I want to know what's inside. I'm, oh. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I got to replay this anyway. Lie and tell them that the satchel is ours. Let's do it. The kiosk happily hands you the satchel and returns to this kiosk. You open it, uh, discovering a small scroll inside. <laughs> A few moments later, you see a dwarf yelling at the construct. You wonder if this is the satchel's true owner. The construct stares up at you suspiciously, making eye contact with you briefly before you slip back into the crowd. Uh, we lose one gold pack favor. <laughs> Find stone skin in the scroll deck and add it to any player's hand. Stone skin. <laughs> so stone skin adds two greens. That's going into... The useless beast master's deck to help him not be useless. Alright, we can buy an item rest, use an item remove. We're out. So uh we were here. We we're going here, and we're gonna go here to the temple. So um, if there's no XP there, we do one, otherwise claim the XP. Read all. Uh, does one of my characters do stuff with scrolls? Uh, he does. That's not one of my characters. It's our friend. We can play a scroll ignoring the hand limit. So either of them can play it. Uh, let's see. If any player has the minor profession, D2. Nope. Stone gargoyles leer down at you from the top of the abandoned uh, Temple of Chantal. The front doors have been barred, and an edict has been plastered over the wood. Temples dedicated to the Drago gods and all other false gods of, of destruction and disorder closed by order of the queen. Fortunately, one of the temple's mosaic windows has already been broken. Oh dear. Making it easy to climb through. Inside, rats scurry over your feet. You hear whispers in the candlelit chamber. A man kneels on the floor by Chantal's statue, his wrists and ankles bound tightly with rope. A human what? A human woman sits at a countertop nearby, grinding herbs with a mortar and pestle. She sprinkles the spices over a sludgy liquid in a small tin cup. When she sees you, she stands up, nearly spilling the foul smelling concoction onto the floor. If any player has the herbalist, here we go. D3 <laughs> Alright. You immediately recognize the odor as typical for the brew for the common, uh, from the common book of remedies. Not a single one of that tome's potions works, but this one, corn, radish, blossoms, sweet moss, ash of withering plum, is meant as a cure for lycanthropy. You tell the woman that her potion won't work, and she looks at you with pleading eyes. That's what, that, then what am I to do? You look at the pitiful man he's keeping in chains. There is no known cure for the werewolf's bite, but you recommend a mixture that would keep the man asleep during his transformation. Herbalist player, increase your intelligence attribute or buy one, ignoring the limit, and add a stamina for it. Yay. So my int goes up to two. And yeah, two. Because I'm an herbalist. Hatch <laughs> Uh okay, if you have the keyword tattoo, I do go to D19. As the woman begins mixing the potion, you notice a tattoo on her left shoulder, a skull with the numerical three written over it, Saber. The symbol of Chantal, goblin god of death. Holgar stares at it curiously. Ah, 
and here is our death worshipper. We've gone to a great deal of trouble to track you down. We have sought refuge here in this temple. The woman explains, it is only fitting that I wear his sigil. My son may resent her strain, but we will be safe. He doesn't understand that it's for his own protection. Polgor smiles grimly and shakes his head. That's why the wolf targeted Death Whispers. The beast was confused. It thought it was lashing out at its own mother, who keeps him prisoner. Before the woman is able to complete her potion, the chain man begins to transform. Brown hair sprouts from every pore in his skin as his muscles bulge. The ropes tighten uh, until they finally snap. His jaws stretch painfully and his teeth make a popping sound as they crack one by one. Quickly replaced by fangs as sharp as daggers, he snarls, lunging forward to attack. We combat the werewolf. If you have the keyword wounded, which we do, Add the weakened modifier card to the combat. All right. All right. So werewolf weakened. Weakened werewolf. So 91. This is a brand new card. So this is a brand new card. The werewolf. It looks like it's two reds. Two blacks. I see white. And, and either purple or blue. So two reds, two blacks. I see wh white and then either purple or blue. I'll put that there. And he gets the weakened modify of status. Uh, red two... Red two, red two, black three, black four, blue. Okay, it's blue. Blue five and a blue white five. Okay, thank you. And weakened status says uh, skill cards do not count against the play limit while he's weakened. So I can play skill cards for free. I can play, I can play skill cards for free. They don't count against the limit and uh, for his, I can play scroll cards against the... Uh, the each player may play one scroll card. So basically, all my skill cards and one of my scroll cards per each player are free. Keep that in mind. All right. He does this. We got to fight. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see what we're dealing with. Uh... I thought you thought I was saying weekend. Oh, weekend! <laughs> thought I was saying the weekend. No, no, it's weekend. Skill cards do not count against player one. Um. Okay. So what can we do? Oh, well, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? So we need red. So I'm gonna do one, one to get a red die. My combat dice limit is three. Um, we need black. So one, one to get a black die. And then both my int per yep blue die. I think that's I think it's both. All right. Yeah, we start off. Yeah, we start this party. Um. You got something for red. I know you do. You got a useless card in there for red. Increase a red or white die by one or two. Just increases them. Rerolling reds. This is for green and white, and this is for blue and white. I can do the warthog. Any of them a four? Oop. Any of them green? Oop. <laughs> okay. What do you got? Uh, 
Reroll a die and return stamina for one player's key box to the supply equal to the result. Oh, roll a die, not reroll. Increase a blue or green die by one or two. <laughs> this works. Harpoon. Harpoon ticks down a black die by one, so that'll get me the four that I need. Or I can make... Then I've got a black and blue I can add. And I can make threes a one or a six. I need it to fix. All right, so let's let's get the known down. Where is it? This one, harpoon. So we're gonna play harpoon. That's going to we're going to pick that black down to a, a uh, four, covering up that nasty slash that I would have had that I would have taken. Um, I could play scrolls against the limit. That wasn't a scroll, that was a weapon. So I could play skills against the limit. Make the red make the red a two, then raise it by one. Make the red. How can I make the red a two? Is there something that Oh, you mean make the red a, it would be a four. It would be a four on the other side. How would I make the red a two? Yeah, how would I make the red a two? Well, show what you mean. Um, I'll throw this Warhog at this thing now. Oh, and when I long rest. Um. Hard three change to two or six. Three. Three change to a one or six, not a two. So I could change a three to a one and then raise it by two if that's what you mean. So I'll play open lock. Change this three a one and then play short sword actually open lock is free so i haven't done it doesn't go against my my play limit so i'll play the short sword which is a weapon to raise it up by two to put it oh sorry two not not three sorry two i meant to raise it up to two. uh there we go so that's covered so we still have that was a skill card, which with weaken status doesn't go against the play limit. So I still have one card to play here, one card to play here. Um, and if I can get that two to a five, that would be just ducky. Um, I might have to add the silver warthog to this. I can increase a blue die by one or two. That's not enough. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna be happening. Let's add the silver wart hog. Uh, which is add a blue white. Why I don't put it in the bag? I can never find it. It's here for right now. See what we got. Three. Uh, it would be four. The other side of that. Which I could turn into a six or a two blue. That was your two. You've got one more. Do you have any blues? And there it is. Increase a blue die by two. There's my five. I'm going to add a stamina to soothe. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stamina to soothe. And then her other one will be a longbow to increase blue by to increase blue by two. I'll take that to a five. Uh, that is her weapon. Five. Cover that lovely one. Uh, I still waste skills.
choose a die in the pool, then discard any number of skill cards. I don't have enough to make that five. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's round one. I'm going to take one, two, three. I'm going to take three, four, five, five damage on that. Anything else I can? Can you flip the two or make it red? No. Uh, he's played his two, so it would have to be the bonus play to it. So, can't flip two. That would be great if I could flip that two. I could re-roll it. Uh, that's an armor card. I've already played two weapon cards. But I could use the bonus play to re-roll it. That's all I got. I can't flip it. I really wish I could. Um, yeah. No. Yep. So I will take one, two, three, four, five. Well, Damage. Go back to the bag. So I'm at one, two, three, four, five. I'm at eleven on you. Ten on ten on you. So how do I I gotta go blind in the bag for the next three. I don't have red. I can pay I can get a white though. Do that. And then I gotta go blind. I can spend charisma and what are you at? One, two, three, four, five, ten. Oof. If he gets hit again, he's out. Yeah, I'm pulling blind. Uh, I do have that, but I have to spend the turn to do that. Uh, it doesn't count against the die limit for pull door. And it's not a scroll, it's a skill. It's not a scroll, but skill cards do not count against my play limit. So I think I will play this. Uh, I'll play it this round. Let me see what my other three are. That's not great. That is really not great. Alright, so this is free. Because skill cards do not count against play limit. I'm going to play this to try to heal him a little. Um, so let me do that now. Roll the die. Take that much fatigue. What? I didn't want that die. I wanted this. Four. Four goes back to supply. Okay. All right. So, what are we doing? With this? Um. There's. Oh. Oh. Um. Okay. This four, I can make a two or a six. Flip the white. I have a white. Uh, oh, I could flip both of them. That one. Yep, you're right. I could flip both of them. I could flip that to a five. That covers that. So I'll play. It's a skill, which doesn't count against my play limit. I'll flip you to that five. If I flip you, you'll be a three. How can I make black? Oh. Wait, 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 wait. It was a four. I can actually make you a two. I'm thinking. Nope. Can't I can't do anything. So 
you are four, now three. I think I'm going to be breaking out this guy's animal card. It's a green light. Oh! Oh, but you can. Got a familiar. That is a. So both of you still have two to play. I don't have any more skill cards to raise anything. Return one stamp from this card to supply to flip any number of familiar dice to the dice pool. Go on, Drake. Blue black. Perfect. Spending a stamina. Flip this to three. That goes there. Now we just need to find a. Now we just need to find a red. A red two. Could be reroll time. Reroll red. Why? I don't have a red to reroll. I reroll that. That's already been placed. What oh, red? Can I make a red? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's the question to ask. Can I make a red? Uh, no. I can make a blue. Nope, I can't even do that. I can't make anything. Um, I think we're going to final round. Shoot, he's going down. So she's got to do. I can make a green. That's the thing. If I had a purple, I could, and I rolled a two, I can make it work. I can make the two a five, but then make red flip back. I can't make anything red. Or, <laughs> what were your class skills again? My class skills, um, uh, Beastmaster, reroll any number of purple dice or familiar dice in the dice pool. And for her, choose a die in the dice pool, then discard any number of skill cards from your, or each skill card discarded, raise a, raise a number by one. I don't have any skill cards. I just have crates and an armor card left. And she's going down if she gets hit this round. Can you make the two of five to then make Red flip back. I can't make anything red. I think that's the thing. Let me show you all my hand. Bone skin green. Reroll red or white. Gain a green or white. Turn fours into twos and sixes. Turn purple into any color. And reroll or flip a green. So I cannot I cannot make red. Um for her, this is all she has. Which is, sorry for the glare, sorry for the glare. Which is, um, make a five any color. I mean, this could work. Because we can then, um, if we make a five any color, but only a four can flip to a two. If I flip the two, yeah, there you go. Um, Can I make a five? No. Yeah, then I could try re-rolling it as a red. I can't make a red. I can't. Can I make a. Oh, chief. Uh, this is a familiar, and that's a weapon. So that was for two. I could, I, the only way to do that is to spend the bonus to do this Drago Wolf. And if this is a five, if this is a five, I can, I can make it red. 
but I can't re-roll that red with it. The wild would work. So I think she's going down. One six. That wouldn't have worked. None of those would have worked. But Beastmaster can flip. He can flip. He can flip a green. He can re-roll the familiar die. But it would have to be a five. That's the that's the problem. So it would have it would be a red five. Remember, she has she's played. I want to make sure I'm seeing this right. Skill skill. So her first turn, she played a skill and a familiar, and her skills were free. She played a weapon, her skills were free. Yep. Then her second turn. So she has one more turn to go. And you have soothing. Soothing's been used. I use soothing to make sure he lives. Soothing's been done. It's gone. Soothing's in the spent pile. Oh wait, no. No, it's not. I have soothing for his stuff. Sorry, that was speculate. Um Sure. I'm not sure how y'all are seeing this, but let's try it. We're going to draw a wolf. It's a six. He can flip a six to a one, but that's all he can do. Or he can re well, no, he'd have to use the bonus to re roll. Turn one stamina for this card. Flip any number. Add cube to soothing. So stinking close. He's going to take 5 damage, which puts him at 13. Then we have to wild draw. Mm. We got to go through the round. That's all we got. If you... If you can make it a five, then change to any color, then flip to suit. I can re roll it. That's the only thing I could really do. I could re roll it and then flip to suit. So let's use the bonus. So the bonus is going to be to re-roll it. It's going to be on her because she's about to die if I don't get this. Yeah. It's five. So I got five. She can make a five red. And then he could flip. Oh. She's out of turns. He's out of turns. <laughs> We're out of turns. We're out of turns. We can't do. Oh, if she if I if I was to do it, it wouldn't be a familiar die. Gotcha. He has to do it. So 
So he can then he can then do this, right? The soothing die he can flip. Which has he done? He's only played three cards. He did the he did the blue first. He did the Drago Wolf that. He did the wild to do it. He or any. Yeah, we don't have the turn to do it. We don't have the turn to do it. He can flip it, <clears throat> but she can turn it red, but then he can flip it. He, we've made it a red five. Now you either need flip or reroll. I don't think, I think I'm out of turn. I think I'm out of turns with it. She's played on. We started off with, he played a skill for free. There's a weapon. Two free skills, a familiar, and a weapon. So that is within two rounds. He's played skill, her skill for free. So round one, weapon. And a skill. Round two, skill, skill, familiar. And weapon. So she did her two. He did... A weapon and a familiar, and then a familiar. So he's got one more turn. And he's not the one who can change the color of it. She is. Unless, unless, yeah, he's not the one who can change. Wait. Yes, I was right. He would have been this. He would have, he would have have then been the one to. If he used the wild token, she would have still been out of turn. Uh, no, she wouldn't have. She would have had one more turn. So he would have used the wild token, for the reroll. He would have used the beast thing for the flip. And then she would have used her well. He would have used to turn it, she would have used her final turn to turn it red, and then he would have used the beast thing to flip it to two. Oh, God, that was a lot. <laughs> we got it. It was just, it was, a, it was a lot of brain burn on that one. It was, when I, I had to count back through her deck, the first thing she played was the skill card. Skill cards are free. The, yeah, we made it red. The first that, that so round one she played a she played harpoon and a skill card. Round two she played two skill cards. She played two skill cards. Wait 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 wait. Round one she played. Two weapons and two skill. She played two weapons and skill card, right? Round two, she played played a weapon and skill card. Round two, she played skill card. She played this. Somehow she played three. What about you? Somehow somebody has to play two and we got it. Round one, he played these two. Round two, he played those two. And there it is. So he played two. It only works on familiar dice. We have not made it. We have made it a not. Is that true? Familiar dice. I thought the dice doesn't change, just the color shift. Still a familiar die, but let's check. I mean, y'all are probably right. Oh, 
Familiars. When a player gains a card from the familiar deck, find the matching familiar die and add it to the dice bag. When a player returns a card to the familiar deck, remove the familiar dice from the dice bag and return it to the game box. Familiar dice can only be added to the dice pool when they are drawn randomly from the dice bag or when the matching familiar card is played. Familiar dice are always considered to be two colors at the same time. So nothing in here says it loses. It says it always is considered to be two colors. So I get to pick which color turns red. The BGG form has it. Let's go BGG. Let's teach, let's, let's play this right. I can't, I can't switch it to red first or else it won't work. Um, but let's go to BGG and check it out. First, uh, BGG, role player, adventures, uh, Yeah, or um, really old question. The variant, the campaign draft variant. y'all find it, let me know and I can just hop to it. Oh, here it is. Familiar dice manipulation. Here we go. Familiar dice are right. Here's my confusion on this. I can only apply a non familiar color. Appropriate dice. Well. Familiar dice is color. Is it in the rule book, Kay? Or you just looked up familiar dice and color sheet. See familiar dice and color sheet. If I use color change ability on a familiar die, does it become a monocolored dice or does that only change one or two colors to become the monocolored dice? Yep, there it is. Boom. We can't screw. She's going to get knocked out. Okay, cool. Nothing I can do about it. Okay, so this doesn't work. You'll get we'll get that back. You'll get her color change back. Um he still has a card to play. So it won't flip will be a five and it won't re-roll it'll actually be six. Oh no it was because it was a five in a row can still change color to red and try you still can't change color to red and try re-roll okay we'll we'll do it and if it doesn't work it doesn't work that's so red now, so she changed it to a five, and then she's kind of done. <laughs> what just happened? What? What?
We did it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> ah, even the sun shines on a dog's butt some days, I guess. So I beat him. I get one, two, three experience. Wow. So I get the three experience. I put them on the board. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you might as well try. So the wolf reverts to human form. Um, D eight. Oh my gosh! The werewolf staggers back, dazed and licking his wounds as he slowly reverts to his human form. Exhausted, he takes a seat on the floor. His mother stands between you, pleading for her son's life. Please, you don't have to do this. Ah. Um. Of course I don't. I'm just sharpening my, my axe over here for no reason. In his human form, the man appears frail. His eyes are bloodshot as if he hasn't slept in days, and his clothes have been torn to shreds. He stares up at you despondently. We can't arrest him, Polgor warns. It's too big a risk. If he bites either one of us, the infection will spread. We have to end this here and now. We'll leave town, the mother insists, and go somewhere far away. We'll live in the mountains far away from town. I'll take care of him, please, I swear to you, I won't let him hurt anyone. I'll keep him in chains if I have to. He'll never see us again. Uh, what is, what is the symbol of me? I need an axe. So I'm just, you just see me sharpening the axe. Oh, I'm killing him. <laughs> just save us all the stress. He's a dead man. I'm killing the werewolf. Kill the werewolf. D12. I'm not even second guessing that. I've seen Silver Bullet. I know how it ends. Polgar carefully places the bottle of poison on its side, rolling it across the floor. It's nearly painless, he explains. Your death will be mercifully quick. <laughs> there you go, Kate. <laughs> Wait! The mother cries out, but her son has already taken a deep sip. She claws at him, attempting to rip the poison from his hands, but he pushes her back. As the poison takes hold, he erupts into a violent fit of coughs. As if in response to the poison, he begins to transform, frantically slashing at his mother's chest and shoulders with his claws, threatening her robes. Terrified, the woman runs off. Dang it, she's a werewolf and we gotta kill her. Disappearing into the darkness as her son slumps to the floor, before he dies, the beast again reverts back to its human form. Now that the, ch cha now that the chamber is empty, you take time to study your surroundings, an enormous bronze idol of Chantal towers over you. The three-headed god of death holds an enormous golden bowl in his hand, an altar filled with dried blood and rotting bone. A message has been carved beneath him. To enter, present your sacrifice. Rats sniff at the altar, but frightened by your torches, scurry back into the dark. Gain one rep with the queen. And reveal title card 188. Yeah, I'm going to have to kill her, too. She's going to be mad at me. I'm still going to kill her. <laughs> uh, we got... Uh, let me shift. A mother scorned. You killed Arnon, a man infected with the werewolf curse. As Arnon's mother struggled to help her son, he was injured. He may now share her son's place. And it says... Your quest is complete! From now on, when a choice indicator gives you the opportunity to move to another location, you may instead turn to the end. We can rest, use an item, or uh, move to another location. Ah, uh, we're done! We're done here, folks. Go to the end. Nothing to see. Actually, I'm going to eat the sweet roll before we go. 137. Uh, D137. D137. You tear off a chunk of sweet roll and place it on the altar. A dozen rats immediately converge upon it, gobbling up the small offering. Then, just as quickly, they scurry back into the shadows, leaving the altar empty. You stare up at Chantal's visage, waiting for something to happen. But the god of death. Actually, I could probably. You know what I could do instead? Yeah. And then it says, use an item again. I'm going to do the poison in the sweet roll. Let's kill us some rats. I'm going to give. We're clearing this anyway. I'm going to give him that. To do 137 and 136 together. 
You tear off a hunk of this of the sweet roll and pour a few drops of poison onto it. Then you sit it on the altar in front of Chantal's statue. Rats emerge from the shadows, excitedly converging on the street. The poison is quick and painless. After a few moments of frantic thing, the rats seem to simply drift off into an eternal sleep. In response to your sacrifice, Chantal's eyes light up, glowing red. Hidden gears crank in the shadows, and a section of the wall pops open, revealing a secret staircase. Go to <laughs> the story. Uh, beneath the temple, you discover a secret room. It has long been rumored that the Chantal High Priest has given sanctuary to the Order of Assassins. Here you appear to have found proof of this accusation. A number of tiny scrolls have been tucked into niches in the stone wall. Each bears the name that has been crossed out. You surmise that these are the names of those who have already fallen victim to the assassin's blade. Among these scrolls, you discover a simple sketch of a lantern. Someone has also scribbled a few notes. Lantern of Wayward Souls, Old Taxus Workshop. Secure it at all costs. You're uncertain why the Order of Assassins would be interested in the simple lantern, much less why they would go through the trouble of stealing it from Old Tax. The gnomish inventor is said to wield strange and dangerous. You wouldn't want to get on her bad side. The walls are lined with a small arsenal of weapons. Generally, it's a bad idea to steal from assassins, but a shiny new glass dagger catches your eye. Rare card 8. Yeah, the last dagger. We can. This is a good card, and I'm giving this to Knucklehead over here, who can't can't seem to roll any. Um. Then we can use time. Let's go to the end now. So we've used all our items. We found what we needed. Embry, the immortal knight, tracks you down. She holds the rein. Of her horse in her hand, though the steed has recovered from its injury, it is it, it's sustained in the werewolf attack. It appears somewhat transformed. Its eyes shimmer red. Silver hair has sprouted throughout its otherwise brown mane. Oh, we got a werewolf going. A werewolf horse. Werewolf horse. Uh, anyway, um, if you have the title newcomer, I do not. Uh, then go to N two. Come, the immortal knight says. We have much to discuss. What titles did you earn? Well, take a look and read off the ending. A werehorse. <laughs> so we have werewolves, defender. Nope, we have a mother scorn. The knight smiles. Out of all the teams, yours was the first to track down the beast at Slayer. Then you bested it in combat. Thanks to you, the town is safe and the monster's victims have been avenged. While everything the knight says is true, you can't help but wonder about the werewolf's mother. She escaped, but only after receiving heat gashes in her chest and shoulder. According to legend, almost everyone who receives a werewolf eventually shares in their curse. If you killed one monster, but soon another will take its place. Then there is... Polgor's comrade. The immortal knight turns to Polgor and smiles grimly. Welcome to the guild. Your halfling companion can scarcely believe it. At first, it seems he might hug the immortal knight. But she offers him a warning look that freezes him in his tracks. Instead, he takes her hand, shaking it vigorously. You won't regret this, he insists. I regret it already, she admits. But then she smiles and shakes her head. It is good to have such eager recruits, she admits. I fear there are dark times ahead. We should seek joy in whatever uh, moments we can. Baffling turns to you. This is where we part ways, I'm afraid, he says. I must return to Jolov. I know that place. My family will be eager to hear what has happened. When we next meet, it will be as comrades in arms, fellow members of the guild. With that, he takes his leave, and we have Awoke's respect. When you tell the Immortal Knight about your encounter with the with Awoke, her face turns grim. Did he really invite you to join the Drogable Alliance? She asks. We've had our eye on him for quite some time. We've long suspected that the Nola is a spy for the Drogable. This confirms it. You've heard rumors of Drago raiders attacking the Queen's caravan? A small coalition of a small coalition of groups that oppose the Queen's rule have formed an alliance seeking to subvert her plan. Though they claim to fight for freedom, their tactics are questionable at best. 
In the, so, conclusion number two. The Immortal Knight's expression turns grim. I'm afraid you've joined the guild at a precarious time, she explains. Tensions are rising between Queen Gimnax and those who have chosen to reject her rule. Though we honor the Queen's law, the guild is not political. Until now, we've been careful not to choose sides. Embry turns to you, studying you carefully. If your Queen's favor is higher than your Gurgul, it is not. Otherwise, go to conclusion three. Fabulous. Uh, the Dragul Alliance claims to fight for self-governance, she explains, but the queen has already offered them seats on her council. Though her rule is far from perfect, she has made every effort to end the conflict without bloodshed. Perhaps you are sympathetic to the Dragul goals of freedom and independence, but they are not innocent in this struggle. They have, they have their own violence and chaos at every turn. You nod silently. There's no need to announce your intentions at this time. Whatever you decide to do, wherever your loyalties ultimately lie, from now it's better to play your cards close to the chest. Find the cunning in the trait deck and add it to another player's hand. So, trait deck. Let's find cunning. There. Where was this card? Where was this card? Ugh. <laughs> this card's gonna go to her. She's earned that. Um, then go to conclusion five. Queen Gimlix has requested our aid. I'm sending you to help her cleanse the catacombs of the undead priests who gather there. If you fail, it is only a matter of time before the undead outnumber the living in the streets of Sadek. If you have the title Werewolf Defender, nope. A mother scorn. Yep. So we're going to seven. Embry steadies her steed. Meanwhile, I will track down the werewolf's mother. I'm not convinced that she is innocent in this plot. Then finally on nine. Without another word, Embry departs. As the newest member of the Heroes Guild, you carry yourself with a degree of pride and a new purpose as you make your way towards Sebek to help Queen Gimnax secure her capital for Nalos. The undead horror awaits. Ah. <sighs> Clear up the adventure and advance. That is the Festival of Heroes. Well, now you have that card. I know, right? So that is the Festival of Heroes. Um, I've got two, four, six, eight experience. But I'm going to spend... I'm going to spend six of them to get my mastery track up by two, which means I get to raise some stats, and I'll do all that off screen, and then we'll be back. <laughs> it was a successful first adventure. Thank you to everybody else, who everyone who, who helped with sorting out the, the dice, the dice puzzle of this game, which is what I really love about this game. I'm still excited. There is a whole other... This is adventure number two. It's the whole thing for adventure number two. I plan to play it on the channel. So I'll be playing this one, Servants of Azima, which is adventure number two. I'll get it scheduled on the channel so we can play that through as well. But like I said, the Kickstarter and... and hours does I have left? I think last one I started it was so tomorrow. Um, Kickstarter and... For people who are interested, Roleplay Adventures is awesome. I love, I love Roleplay. It's awesome. Uh, 17 hours, so it ends tomorrow. So the the um the the Kickstarter ends tomorrow. Uh, so I'd probably say if you're interested in getting in on it, get in on it now. However, if you're not and you're like, okay, well, you know, you can you'll play vicariously through me. I played through all of Roleplay Adventures. That's in the description and a playlist below. But um, if you just are interested in getting role player adventures, that now too, that's on the Thunderworks game site, so you check that out. But I'm excited to see where the story goes. I love role player adventure. I love role player. I think it's so. Um, thank you so much, Thunderworks Games. This they did not pay me for this. They were just kind enough to send me a copy for me to play. So thank you so much for sending me a preview copy. Everything you saw here is preview and subject to change. However. I don't know if it'll change that much. 
from what we saw, it looks like a pretty complete chapter uh, adventure one and two. Some misspellings here and there, but um, we're off to a grand adventure. And on the other side of this board's map, too, and we'll get to play it. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Thank you to my Patreons. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. And thank you for everybody for hanging out. So I will see you all Saturday for Rose Sworn and once on Club Shop Chat. And then Sunday, we're playing, we're back in Arkham Horror LCG. And then next week, I'm off, but it's also Thanksgiving. So Monday, Agents of Merch. Tuesday, Marvel United. And I'm hoping. I'm hoping beyond hope that I can learn the rules for Frostpunk and I'll play it. I I want to play that game. So <laughs> um if I, I'm going to I need to learn Agent Merch. Um I'm halfway through that rule book for Monday. But um Tuesday, if I can learn Frostpunk, I'll play it Tuesday. If I can't, I'm gonna play it Friday, I think. So we'll see. I'm playing Frostpunk next week. It's happening. It's just when. So um, check out the channel if you like. If you see, if you like what you see, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit the alert bell to know when stuff pops up. But um, I thought you had Rogue Angels this Sunday. Dang it! It is Rogue Angels this Sunday. Yes, I'm playing Rogue Angels. I'm sorry, Kate. You're right. I'm playing. We're doing. That means the next Friday and Sunday we're playing Arkham Horror. So I'm going to find a place to fit in Frostpunk. <laughs> I will find a place to fit it in next week, but we'll get there. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate it. I will see you all later. Have a good night, late night, morning. See you all later. Bye-bye.